Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of the Hand of the Day brought to you by Conscious Poker. This hand comes from the Triton Super High Roller 1 million pound buy-in, the biggest tournament in poker history. And we, my friends, are at the final table. Coming right up on the Hand of the Day. Hand of the Day. Before we jump into the video, if you're new to this channel, Conscious Poker is the best place to take your poker game to the next level. We release new strategy videos every week, Ask Me Anything, I do Ask Alec episodes, all sorts of fun stuff. So be sure to hit that like or subscribe button and turn on notifications so you're always alerted when a new video comes and you never miss one. So now let's kick it off with this hand. We are with 100K, 200K blinds with a 200K ante at the final table. So ICM is going to come into play. We'll talk about that. But this hand kicks off with Vivek Rajkumar, a great uh, high stakes tournament player, opens on the button to 450,000 with the big stack. You can see here he has 18 million chips. So his range for opening, especially with shorter stacks, Perkins and Chidwick in the blinds, is going to be much wider than what is standard here. Remember, in tournaments, you want to leverage your stack size. So when you're the bigger stack, you can afford to apply a lot more pressure because the additional chips you have are worth less than the previous chips. And likewise, other people have incentive to fold. So Perkins in the small blind has a lot of incentive to fold because he can just fold and wait for you know Chidwick to go broke in the big blind or vice versa. So everyone has incentive to fold, thereby allowing Rajkumar to play even wider ranges on the button. So keep that in mind because it's going to come into play later on. Ace-8, though, very standard open. I like his sizing, 2.5x. Don't have to go much into that. And over to Chidwick now in the big blind, who has the jack-5 of diamonds. Now, while this isn't a great hand, and albeit not a great spot because he's going to want to play tighter here to kind of let other people bust to move up the pay jumps, especially in the biggest tournament in history. Uh, this hand is just too strong to fold. You can't just be folding suited jack highs uh, when you're getting a great price like you are here. You have to defend and play your big blind. And the big blind's the, the place where you're going to play the most amount of hands. Jack five suited, calling basically a min raise two and a half X is definitely going to be a call. Chidwick calls. Let's take a flop. With a pot of 1.2 million, the flop comes down Jack-9-4 rainbow. Chidwick checks, which is super standard here. I think he's pretty much never going to have a leading range, so he's going to check 100% of the time. And over to Rajkumar, who has to decide whether he wants to merge his range and bet with this ace high or just check and take it to showdown. And I get a lot of people asking me, what do you do with these marginal types of hands on flops like these? And the answer is, depends. If you look at what some of the solvers are saying, they adopt what's called a mixed strategy, meaning sometimes they bet with these types of hands and sometimes they check. And I know that's not the answer you're looking for, but if you always do one thing, you're going to be too predictable. And that sort of makes sense intuitively. Uh, I think in this spot, I would probably just lean towards a check uh, because even if you do bet and your opponent calls and he has a worse hand than you, like a, a gut shot or whatever, you're still not going to win this hand at showdown. The turn's going to go check, check, and then he's going to bluff the river, and you're not going to win. So it's kind of like the one-and-done strategy isn't great on this board. I guess the case for betting here, and I like to kind of look at it both ways to evaluate both options, is you could get called by some worse hands, right? You could bet and still technically get called by a queen high, a king high, or a worse ace high, and maybe you win at showdown against those hands too if they don't decide to turn it into a bluff. One thing I will say, though, is if you do decide to bet this board, you're going to want to choose a very small sizing. You, go, you just want to deny equity from hands that could bluff you on the turn. Another good reason for betting is that you take away the opportunity for a hand like 7-6 to just bluff you off your hand on the turn. And you also want to allow your opponent to call with potentially a worse hand. And a small size accomplishes both of those things. So I like this decision to bet 300000 from Rajkumar. It's a good bet, a fourth of the pot. Over to Chidwick now, who has a super clear call. Top pair, never going to fold this hand. One play you could actually opt for here is raising, given that his stack size is so small. He could actually mix in a check raise here for value. Check raising here with this hand, balancing that out with some bluffs, maybe some like king 10s that want to check raise, maybe a hand like 10-7 that wants to check raise, maybe 8-7 that wants to check raise, maybe just a stone bluff like queen 8 that wants to check raise as well. You could mix in some top pairs and then have your opponent shove 
with his draw or a nine or whatever it is, and then call with this hand. So if you do decide to check raise here, it's because you want to play for stacks. I guess I'm okay with that line. It's a little bit higher variance, and maybe with shorter stacks behind you, you prefer to take a lower variance line and opt to check call. Chidwick agrees. He opts to call. Well, let's take a turn. Turn comes a queen of spades, which is a terrible card for Chidwick. It's really brutal to have an overcard come here but he opts to check, which is very standard. I think he's going to be checking this turn almost always, but especially when a card comes that's worse for his range than it is for his opponents, he has a very clear check. He opts to check here, and over to Vivek, who has to decide whether he wants to really turn his hand into a bluff and go for it, or just give up this pot. Now, typically here, if you do bet the ace-8 on the flop, you want to potentially bluff on turns that help your hand. The only really good turns that help you are queens, tens, and sevens. But I like the queen the most as a bluff because this card favors your range the most, meaning it's easier for the button to have a queen than it is for the big blind to have a queen. So I like this decision to bet here from Vivek. If you're going to decide to bluff with his hand, if you're going to bet the flop with his hand, you kind of have to accept that there's going to be certain situations where you realize your hand is no good because you got called, and then you turn your hand into a bluff. This bet on the turn by Vivek really puts uh, Chidwick's entire range in a really tough spot. Even if Chidwick has one of the better hands he can have, like he does here, a jack, which is top pair, he's only beating a bluff here on the turn when his opponent bets again. So his opponent's repping, you know, two pair, a top pair, maybe a stronger jack, a straight. All those hands have Chidwick absolutely crushed, and it puts him in a very tough spot. He's going to fold here with ace high. He's going to fold here with a four. He's going to fold with a mid pair. He's probably going to fold a nine. So I like this bet from Vivek, and I think it actually does accomplish quite a bit. Over to Chidwick now, who, while he is going to be folding a decent part of his range here, he's only going to be calling with the stronger portion, like a pair in a straight draw, maybe something like 9-10, or a jack. A jack here is a clear call. You can't just fold this hand, otherwise you can allow your opponent to bluff anything on the turn, and you're going to be folding too often. So you have to hang on. You have to stick around with some part of your range, even though the situation is not good for you. And look, in these high roller tournaments, when you're playing against the best in the world, you can't just wait for like these spots where you have these nutted hands to put the money in. Otherwise, you're just going to get run over. You're going to lose all your chips and be blinded down to 10 big blinds and have to just gamble for your stack. So you have to hang on here when you have good hands, especially when you're against the chip leader whose range could be a lot wider, when he has incentive to bully you, when it's buttoned big blind. These are the times where you have to hang on. So I love Chidwick's decision to call here. Let's take a river where things get interesting. The river comes a six of hearts. Chidwick has a very clear check. He only beats a bluff here. He's checking, just praying that his opponent checks so that he could win the pot at showdown. But of course, over to Vivek now, who has a tough decision. I mean, he bet this turn, hoping his opponent folded some mid-pair, ace-high types of hands. His opponent called again. It's likely his opponent has maybe a strong hand that's trapping. He could, he could have some nutted hands here, like queen-jack or queen-nine or maybe even jack-9, 10-8, king-10. But a lot of his range is going to be these one-pair or combo-draw type hands, like 10-9, jack-10, jack-8, 9-8. Uh, those types of hands that are all just essentially bluff catchers. So Vivek really has to decide if he wants to put his opponent to the test. And you can see here he goes through some process, asking his opponent how much he has, kind of eyeing him down and looking at his stack, and really trying to decide whether he wants to bet here, even uses a time bank to go through this decision. In the end, he opts to bet here, and I like his decision to jam. If you're going to bet here, you need your opponent to fold. You're putting him to the test. You're also not representing a lot of hands here when you bet as Vivek. You're not going to bet this river for any size with a hand like Jack-10, right? Even King Jack is not going to bet here. So the mere decision for Vivek to bet this river means he has a queen, like ace-queen, king-queen, or better. Otherwise, he's bluffing. And whenever your range is polar, meaning it's weighted towards really, really strong hands or air, you want to bet bigger and make it very difficult for your opponent to call you. So I love this decision to go all in. And let's face it, even if Chidwick thinks Vivek could be bluffing, it's his entire tournament life. And he has ICM to consider here. In other words, he can fold and potentially let Big Al with 2.8 million or Perkins with 2.2 million bust before him and move up the pay jump one or two spots, which is huge. So I love this play from Vivek. If it was a cash game, I think it's a little bit 
easier for your opponent to just a hero call you here because a lot of the draws missed. But in a tournament, even if they think you're bluffing, they have so much incentive to fold because their chips aren't worth the dollar value they represent. And preserving your stack is so, so important. So I love this bet from Vivek. He has extra chips. He can afford it, putting max pressure on Chidwick. Over to Chidwick now, who realizes this is an impossible spot, throws in all of his time banks at once because there is so much to consider here. The first thing I would look at here from Chidwick is just a read on my opponent. And here's where I think that we could potentially pick something up. I think Vivek, when he asks him how much he has, potentially a sign of weakness. If you had the nuts, a really strong hand, you wouldn't really care. You just kind of either stack and realize it's about a pot size bet and you just bet or you put it in. When he asks him how much he has and he kind of looks at him here, I feel like it's weakness and he's trying to get a read. He also glances at him again before he makes his decision, looking at him to, I feel like trying to get a read, which to me is a sign of weakness. So if I'm Chidwick, I'm playing live poker at the highest level, my at the final table of the biggest tournament in history, my opponent goes all in, I'm going to try and look for some live exploitative read because it's hard, even for the best in the world, not to give away that little something. From a game theory standpoint, though, you're typically going to want to call here with the top portion of your range, especially when there's ICM to consider and you could fold and potentially move up the pay jump. You're going to want to be a little bit tighter in these spots and potentially even fold these weaker jacks and only call with hands that are a little bit better, like maybe a queen high type hand that floated the flop, like queen 10, queen 8, um, obviously two pair, a straight, a set are all going to call. So Chidwick really has to evaluate where he's at in his range. In other words, if he looks at all the hands he can have that call the flop, call the turn, where does jack 5 fall? Well, it's kind of in the middle slash bottom, right? He could have some worse hands like 10-9 or like 9-8, but really this is kind of near the bottom. Like his weaker jacks are the worst type of hands he can have. Also, in some ways, it's better to have maybe even a 10-9 hand because you block some straight combos that your opponent can have as well. So he really has no blockers over his opponent's value range. Um, so jack-5 is a really tough call here from a game theory standpoint, um, especially in a spot like this. So I think here he's really relying on his live read and the fact that he probably, I mean, I'm speculating here, but I would think in this spot, you know, all the draws missed, he's on the button, he's going to be playing a wide, wide range of hands pre-flop, which means he's going to wind up on the river with more bluffs. Hands like king-5 offsuit that maybe people don't play on the button, Vivek might play with 18 million against stacks of 2 million and 4 million. He might play those hands. And so he'll wind up betting the turn with those hands and then going for it on the river with those hands. So when you add up all like the king five or the king three or the king deuce suited or the random bluff like this one that just decides to go for it because he can afford it, plus maybe the, some of those live exploitative tells that we kind of went over, I think I could see here how if I'm Chidwick, I'm going to lean towards making an exploitative call. And I'm trying not to say that because I can see the cards trying to analyze this objectively. I know that the book would say to fold here. And if I was playing a robot on the computer, I would just fold this hand. But in this live spot, I can see how getting behind a call here makes some sense. Let's see what Chidwick does. Live poker, one of the game's greatest players. He does oh call. I mean, God. welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the big stage. Stephen Chidwick, just, just absolutely savage play there i mean this guy is a true true wizard you saw build go wow that's my reaction that is an amazing call just it was a, it, i think it was a good read on the bluff power to chidwick who makes one of the best calls ever that's why he's one of the best absolute legend i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications more awesome contents coming your way don't want you to miss a video thanks for your support you guys are awesome and uh, much love everybody peace